would be your first half grade, I guess, in this game? You know, I'm pretty happy with seven and two. Um, you know, there's always games that, you know, you'd like to have back or things you'd like to do differently. But uh, I think, you know, we did a good job of protecting our home court um, and uh, getting as many wins as we possibly could. I'd probably say a B plus probably somewhere around there. Well, I think we've learned a lot from the first half. Uh, I think we need to be able to uh, come focused and ready for every opponent that we play and be able to put 40 minutes together if you want to, you know, finish at the top of the league. Uh, you can't take times, you know, you can't take quarters off or halves off or anything like that. You have to just be uh, very ready to go at night in, night out. Uh, you know what? I think we, uh, it's just dependent on the situation. You know, I didn't think we came in really um, focused and ready to go against Northern Kentucky, but we also had the day delay, um, you know, so there's so many factors that go into it. But then I thought we did a great job coming in uh, ready for Cleveland State. Uh, and, um, you know, so I think every situation is different. I think this team has, has done a, uh, a nice job of, of getting themselves ready for the most part and maintaining that for 40 minutes. And uh, we're just trying to continue to, to get better each day and to work on those things every day. You know what? Our minutes have been pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I looked. I've looked at the minutes. You know that each player has played in conference, and I think there might have been players that have played more minutes last year uh, as individuals than this year. We, we've we've done a pretty good job of of trying to give them rest when we can, and uh, during games or outside of the games. I think our players feel good. I think their legs feel good. I think they're. Uh, strong right now for this time of year, so that's all we can ask for. And healthy, that's all we can ask for. Very nice to have you. I appreciate you. I think since Mary's gotten here, she continues to grow. She's a hard worker. She wants to get better. She's always coming in and watching film and. Uh, I think uh, offensively, we've always known that she can score and she's a force down there, but defensively, she struggled at times um, throughout you know, her freshman and sophomore year, but uh, focused on it and wants to get better at it and wants to do whatever she can to help uh, the team win. So I'm happy to see that she's getting uh, recognized for her play. Um, and, so, and, and some of that's defensive. Uh, I think she had five blocks against Northern Kentucky, which hasn't been done for a lot of years. And, um, you know, she's had to guard some of the, the uh, league's best players uh, and done a nice job on them. So very happy with how Mary is, is growing and getting better, uh, you know, every week, every game. Not really. I, I think, you know, I heard grumblings of it not going back to Detroit. And as soon as I heard those grumblings, I said, well, it's going to end up in Indy. <laughs> just it just makes a lot of sense. It's a pretty good location for all the teams. It's where our headquarters is, it's where the NCAA headquarters is. So I think it's a, you know, it's a pretty solid choice. Well, I mean, it's in IUPUI's hometown, so that would be the only negative. You're not playing on their home floor. Um, you know, they don't get the experience kind of of, of going to a tournament somewhere uh, outside of, of their, you know, hometown. But um, so there's there's a couple ways to look at it. But I think it's a good location and uh, I'll know more once we have it there a year. And, you know, I've never seen the building that we're playing in and things like that at hotels, different uh, um, practice facilities, things like that. But John, in this world of social media, Not really. I mean, we're very you know, focused on the next game at hand. 
our, our team knows that we're not um, talented enough just to show up and beat teams. <laughs> we have to we have to come focused and ready and play well in order to get wins every night. So there's some there's some pressure and some stress in that, but it's also comforting to know that we control it. You know, if we show up focused and playing hard and and working like we know how to work, we'll give ourselves a chance to win. But if we don't, you know, we can definitely get beat. It's been great. Uh, I think when, when we finished, when we got home off of the Green Bay Milwaukee road trip, met with the team and said, "Hey, we have 25 days in a row where we're at home, which is crazy in you know a January, you know, early February stretch." Um, so we had talked about making the most of it and obviously try, protecting your home court, getting as many wins in this stretch as you can and. Uh, team's done a great job. We have two left to finish it off, and um, you know we can completely evaluate it once once these last two are done. This team's pretty much the same schedule in the second half, with the exception of the road trip will be first again. Yeah. So, I mean, is the first half easier, second half, or they're all. Um, you know, if you look at it purely as in, you know, we've only played one top team on the road, Green Bay. You know, this time through we'll have to go to to Wright State and to IUPUI, um, you know, but I think Milwaukee's very good at home. Uh, so we've already played there. You know, it, it's it's kind of a toss up. I mean, you get if you want to win a league title, you got to be able to get it done on the road, too. And, um, you know, we have four of our last five on the road, but one of those being Cleveland State. So um, it's really our schedule has been pretty fair this year. As compared to you know different years. Not really. The only thing that I don't like is the non double header rule has forced us to play Fridays and Sundays, uh, and I really like to give the players a complete day off from school, practice, everything where they can just relax and do whatever they want on Sundays. And when when we have to play Friday, Sunday, that takes that day away. They get Monday off from basketball, but they're they're going to school and all the other stuff that they have to do on a regular a weekday. John, if you look at the numbers, it appears when there are double headers, the bigger crowds for this two for the price of one. I would assume expenses would go down a little bit because you're not opening the new arena like last year still a full straight game here. Yeah. I know the coaches vote on that, so to speak. Are you in favor of double headers? Do you like double headers? I mean, maybe yeah. Every league game. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with double headers. I like them. I think it's it's good for the the crowd, the community, for um, uh, the program. You know, I I like them. Um, uh, you know, I don't know if I would want them every week, but I don't think it's our league is set up like that. Um, it's really the men's side that kind of. Uh, how, does, how does that kind of you guys vote? Do the men coaches vote, or do they? You know, how, how does that? How does it come? How does the decision come back? I think the league makes the final decision. I think everyone has input, and then the league makes the final so decision. The yeah, I think the ads vote on it too, um, and and I'm sure the 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 league takes all of that into consideration and and makes the decision. So it's not. A